So I wanted to say a little bit about this third turning point of view that we're going to be looking through this week. And, you know, in past weeks, we've been looking at the second and then first turning in the first week. Um, and, and each of these turnings, the way I'd like to offer, again, this, um, the usefulness of this, I think, is in being able to try out these different perspectives which have emerged in the historical development of uh, Buddha Dharma and um, have mostly happened in, pre, in the pre-modern era um, before Western modernity. Um, this third turning point of view emerges around the 6th, 7th century CE in Northern India and then migrates into Tibet where it gets incubated for a, a millennia, basically. Um, and then also crosses across the Silk Road into Japan. Um, and it's called the Vajrayana um, as well as the third turning. And it's, it's a period and, and kind, of to, uh, kind of movement within Buddhism that has certain characteristics and certain um, vantage points. One of them is um, Reggie Ray, a teacher that I really, really appreciate and have uh, done a lot of training with his material, his work on somatic um, meditation. He, he talks about um, the Vajrayana as being something which is exploring going beyond emptiness. And to understand that, you have to kind of go back to the second turning, which one of the core teachings of which was emptiness, sunyata. And that idea, that, the idea of emptiness, the concept, what emptiness the concept points to is um, that no concept is complete or completely certain. Um, we can't really trust our storing, abstracting mind because it, we're, we are, by abstracting itself, by conceptualizing, we're stepping away from some aspect of our experience, our, our sort of sensory experience. And we're, 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 we're kind of making a kind of leap, which, which is fine. You know, the thinking mind does that, that, and all Dharma arises out of that mind, the abstracting mind, you know, all language arises out of that. And yet, um, recognizing the, the sheer emptiness of concepts uh, and of ideas and of uh, feelings and stories um, leaves us liberated. Um, and what does it leave, leave us liberated for? Um, David Loy has a great quote from a book called The World is Made of Stories. And he says something like, I'm going to paraphrase here a little. Um, if delusion is attention, uh, if delusion is awareness stuck in attention traps, and enlightenment liberates delusion, then is the purpose of the spiritual path to find the correct story, to get rid of stories, or to learn to story in a new way? Is it to find the right story, get rid of all stories, or learn to story in new ways? Um, and, and he clearly leans toward the latter, <laughs> as do I. Um, but it's a really interesting question, and, and it's one that arises when we, when, when we recognize that emptiness is itself empty, uh, the concept emptiness is empty too, um, then, then we, we have to recognize that life continues. Um, this is the recognition of the third turning. Reality continues even as it's transparently empty to itself. Um, as a human being, like with all of our shit. <laughs> um, and so, um, and all of our strengths and all of our um, gifts as well. Um, and so the third turning is really looking at how do we live that sacred exist, that sacred empty existence, that luminous, effulgent, experiential, direct contact with our moment to momentness, which has a kind of vibrancy and a bounciness to it uh, and aliveness. How do we live that? Um, how do we become that more fully? Um, and how do we realize our own Buddha nature? Um, and that's one of the key um, pointers in the third turning, Buddha nature, uh, tatata, Tatataka Garba, almost close.
close enough. And um, Buddha nature and the teachings on Buddha nature pointing to something which is always already the case. And here I'm pointing to it also um, because it's not something that exists as a concept or out there somewhere to be attained. It is our own basic nature. It's could be said to be timeless and primordial without beginning and without end. Just this, just this human experience. Even that human experience can go and it's this. What is this? Breathing is like this. An aspirational prayer for Mahamudra. For me, this points in a really timeless way to what the third turning is about. This is by Rangjung Dorje, the third Karmapa. And, and tradition of uh, tolkus, people that are considered to be reborn. Uh, he's the third, he's, he's version 3.0. It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. Even the victorious ones haven't seen it. It is not non-existent because it is the basis of all samsara and nirvana and flushing toilets. This is not a contradiction because this is the unity of the middle way. May we realize the true nature of mind, which is free from all limitations and extremes. It doesn't exist. Even the, even the enlightened ones haven't seen it. Even the Buddhas haven't seen it. It's not non-existent because it's the basis of all samsara and nirvana. It's the basis of all things. This is not a contradiction because this is the unity of the middle way. What is the middle way? Ken McLeod, a Vajrayana teacher, once told myself and my partner Emily, he said the middle way, the practice of the middle way is to hold two seeming opposites in attention at once, simultaneously. This is not a contradiction because this is the unity of the middle way. May we realize the true nature of mind which is free from all limitations and extremes. What is the true nature of mind? <laughs>